Okay, we're back live here at the Stanford Excel Symposium. Getting down to the end of the day, and uh, this is the Cube, our flagship program. We're out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. And I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm here with Jeff Kelly of Boogiebond.org, and we're here with Madhu Sajkuhar, who's the with founder of Cetus, who was sold to VMware, which was spun out to Pivotal. You Welcome got to it. the Cube. Thank get, you. Get a little closer to the microphone, so sure. we don't get the background noise there. Thank but, you, John, uh, and thank you, Jeff, both. So the story on your company is we've been following your great success because you guys were doing some pretty compelling work in social data Thank in Palo Alto, right on University Avenue, True Ventures financed, yes. uh, great, great company. Um, you guys had a nice run. Before you even could break out, VMware saw you guys and, and, and brought you in on an acquisition. Um, give us the update on, on the company, role within VMware. Obviously, Pivotal's mm -hmm. high profile spin out. I had a post on it, Dave Vellante had a post on it. So the EMC, VMware spun out Pivotal. See this, Green Plum, Spring. Gemfire. Gemfire, yeah, so give us the lowdown. Sure, and thanks for uh, talking to me today, John. I mean, you've been a good friend for us, and you write good articles for us on uh, for Pivotal, so thank you. So uh, with that, I think, what can I tell you? I think right now my role is um, playing the, um, what I call, I run Pivotal Analytics for uh, Pivotal, and Pivotal Analytics includes the CETAs, as you mentioned about, and it encompasses from Hadoop Analytics on top of Pivotal HD to Streaming Analytics, uh, to the point we actually do also Cloud Foundry Analytics. The way in which we are seeing the vision of the company now is going forward. A um, lot of our customers want to build applications on Cloud Foundry, our Spring environment, and they actually want analytics to be available. I think where you see the next revolution is as you build the mobile apps, you have a choice. Would you want to go build it in a, a, a platform where there is no big data paradigms and data structures available? Or would you like to come to a place where all these are available to build the next generation mobile apps where you have enabled streaming and Hadoop analytics available? So we want people to come to Cloud Foundry. We want to make analytics as a core reason why they should come there. And that's a big bet we are making. So talk about the now the mashup of the Cloud Foundry, because that's, that's important. I mean, Paul Moritz, set out his vision when he was the CEO of VMware in 2010. We were there, it's our first year doing theCUBE. This is going to be our fourth VM world coming up. It was the mainframe software operating system, and at the top of the stack he had applications. Now, right. the world's changed, big data became very a fast growing market. Those apps kind of didn't materialize as fast enough. So, you know, Moritz is a tooling guy, he's a tools guy. Right. Microsoft, that's his background. Gelsinger is an infrastructure guy. Right. So, Great team. So we've always been pro pro Pat and pro uh, Paul. So Ying and Yang. Huh? I said Ying and Yang. Yeah, and Ying and Yang. And these guys, that's the Wintel, we called it, of <laughs> yeah, cloud, Wintel, mobile, yeah. social. Um, but now Pivotal seems to have a, a rebirth freedom, right? Because now it, there is a developer focus, you have the cloud, there is spring there. This nice separation between the two. Uh, what is the strategy with data? I mean, you have a data fabric you guys talk about. How does your piece fit into Cloud Foundry Spring? Explain that. Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, of all the people, very few people can describe as good as you have done, so thank you. Uh, but I think you got the picture. I think what I think Paul's vision is, underneath he wants to have a cloud infrastructure layer, a cloud uh, orchestration layer. So that includes Bosch. Uh, that includes how do I launch these instances, manage the instances in terms of dynamic resource orchestration, in terms of provisioning, in terms of uh, configuration. That's the underneath cloud. And the cloud needs to be hybrid cloud in his vision. So we support Amazon. Like today, Pivotal Analytics Engine still does Amazon. We want to do that on VMware. We also, in the future, we want to support OpenStack. So we want to be neutral to the type of cloud. And we, are, we want to provide a cloud orchestration layer. On top of that, we want to provide a, the best in class, what we call all-in Hadoop, which is Total Hadoop. The goal of Total Hadoop is the reason for you to run Hadoop with us would be the best performance, best scale, and also be able to provide the, all the services that you need on Hadoop. So that's what we call Total Hadoop. And on top of Total Hadoop is where Total Analytics comes in, right? And Total Analytics is where you can do real-time streaming data, you can do aggregation, you can do event uh, analytics, mm -hmm. you can do behavioral analytics, to the point you can do modeling. So the reason people do come to Pivotal should be a many reasons, and we want all of that to be available on the Cloud Foundry infrastructure. Yeah. So once people come to Spring and Cloud Foundry, 
you have access to them, all the APIs, SDKs, and libraries for them to build best-in-class application which can use big data services underneath. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the view we are doing it, and uh, I, I think it's an incredible journey of all the assets uh, that Paul pulled together, and I'm, I'm humbled to be part of this journey, and uh, I'm, I would say, lucky and thankful for them to be selected in this process, and I'm very happy. With, yeah, well, uh, congratulations on your successful entrepreneurial journey. We have to get the hook here because our next guest is, is here. We want to squeeze you in because you're a friend and we're a big admirer of your work uh, at Cetus and now v then VMware and now Pivotal. We're obviously following it. Uh, you know, I, I have been positive on Pivotal, but I'm not, you know, all, you know, all there yet. You know, I'm still we'll reserving you. judgment. I did slam the CRN article that said, compared Paul Moritz to Jeff Bezos, which I thought was a little bit over the top. But I think Moritz has got the chops. He's a tools guy. I think he's going to do very well with Pivotal. Right. I think it's also worth pointing out the uh, the investment by GE. Yes. And how that's going to play. I'm curious. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to get one question if I could. Sure. Um, the, the whole concept of the industrial internet and how that uh, fits into your strategy, uh, uh, or, or is that really the the underlying. Uh, um, area or focus area that you that you want to provide these capabilities for bringing together that kind of uh, machine generated it is, data. It is. I think uh, uh, if you think of it, I see the data in multiple ways. There's a data that's called uh, what I call data has certain dimensions, mm -hmm. and time is an important dimension. We call this time series data. Yes. Industrial internet will generate telemetry data, as Paul calls it, time series data. The, uh, the way in which we want to build analytics is should be able to handle a simple, good old reporting clickstream data for all the web and social companies to the industrial internet companies or the applicants will generate sensor data, telemetry data, which is time series in nature. We think that will generate an order of magnitude more data and need to have different type of analytics. Mm. And that requires different type of data structures and analytics and we want to take a bet with them. Yeah, and then you, it's a very much, you've got to orchestrate a very, it's a very complex, uh, Environment when you've got, uh, you know, you've got different workload demands. When you're right. talking in uh, industrial internet uh, scenario, you've got some real time. You've got some already doing more batch analytics to inform some of that real time. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. And I think it's a very interesting. Um, I guess it's an investment and a partnership to be doing right. some research and development with GE, uh, who you know is now kind of a, you know, they're they're a manufacturer of industrial equipment, and now they're also in the really the software and analytics business as applied to that equipment. So it'll be very interesting to watch. And um, you know, like John, I'm very interested to see how it, how it goes. Yeah, we love you guys. Great job. Exciting to see the competition. Obviously, a lot of people are see, are making these big moves and getting the GE endorsement of Brazil was a killer. So congratulations. Okay, we'll be back with our next guest here. Exclusive coverage from the Stanford Excel Partners Symposium, live from Stanford University in Stanford, California. I'm John Furby. Right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you, John.